I cannot reach you, volume 4 review. The school trip to Kyoto culminated after a series of misunderstandings in Yamato kissing his childhood friend Kakeru in the rain and promptly passing out with a high fever. Now everyone's back at school except for Yamato who is recovering and Kakeru doesn't know whether he's coming or going. But he goes to visit Yamato at home with classmate Fujino, safety in numbers. Yamato seems to have completely forgotten what happened before he fainted, which only adds to Kakeru's confusion. He started out yelling angrily, I'm drunk with you. Yamato returns to school, but the atmosphere in the classroom is highly charged, with Kakeru pointing ignoring Yamato. It's not until the class are playing soccer that Ho so Hosaka, who was close by in Kyoto and saw everything, tells him bluntly, you kiss him, right? And Yamato realizes why Kakeru is so furious with him. This can't continue like this, so next morning it's Yamato who marches Kakeru up onto the roof of school, where for the first time he forces himself to speak honestly to Kakeru about how he feels and why it's been difficult for him to communicate his feelings. This will end third time. I had a crush on you. All this time, Kakeru has been alternating between bewilderment and fury until he suddenly gets his act together and says, I've decided I'm going to face your feelings head on. What, what might have convinced him to change his mind is a conversation he had the day before the Yamato sisters, Mikoto, who told him bluntly, I know just how much my brother cares about you. The trouble is that now the confusion has been made. Kakeru is super sensitive to Yamato's presence. It's the Nemo to relax around him. After the feverish in more ways than one, ending of Volume 3, the manga could have developed up the successing chapters in one or two ways. The could have continued to raise the stakes between the two childhood friends whose friendships can even be the same after the kiss. However, in Volume 4, Mika opts for that. Let's dial this back card by going for, a, for the Yamato was running a high temperature so has only a hazy memory of what, hap what happened when he covers blood that at close. This seems more than just a teensy beat Contrib and a way of dragging everything out, as by the end of this volume, Ontrib enjoyed some amusing reaction scenes with Takiru's agonizing and his friends, teasing him, not being much as change until the final chapter even then. Not that much. Sasaki Miyano's editor and Magaka described its earlier chapters as BL, this was not entirely seriously intended, but the label applies rather more up to here, even during the presence of girls, sisters, classmates, within the point points. But this is also what's the likable about I can reach you, I cannot reach you, but much of his charm lies in a certain unspoiled the equality, the enduring friendship that's brought these two boys together since early childhood. It's a recurring theme in the many BL that's as what happens when friendship deepens to love. Can't that original innocent friendship even be re revived? The elephant in the room, and I cannot reach you, which is hardly even alluded to. Let alone mentioned hence the teen rating is sex. I keep returning to naive and innocent to describe Takiro and what is implied that Yamato gets hot and bothered around Takiro and is finding it harder than hug him or hold hands. And by implication much more, these are second year high school boys after all. Takiro is either in denial or not quite as mature, yet. It's by the Mika's hint in the afterword of volume 3 that they like to throw something spicy, nothing of the kind occurs here. In the new afterworld, Mika describes the stages of the boy's relationship as going from paces, the first broadening the hesitation and anxious of the volume 3, characterizing, characterizing volume 4's pace as bashful, there's certainly a lot of blushing, what pace the mangaka wonders, will they get to you in volume 5? There are hints of the intriguing subplot bubbling under as Yamato's sister Mikoto, who's begun to play a more significant role meet Hosaka, the boy's classmate will sense what was going on with Yamato and Kakeru in Kyoto, might another relationship be in the cards? Osaka is an enigma in many ways, so it's an interesting possibility. The art, especially on the cover and the four color pages inside, is as subtle and attractively painted as ever. Mika achieves, as before, an appealing balance between the extreme reaction faces of Takeru pulls, especially in his furious demon transformi transformation mask after telling Yamato that they drunk. Anya Forger has a rival, and the more realistic panels, many concentrating on close-ups, Mika has a gift for capturing the fleeting but telltale hints of emotion as this relationship begins to evolve in Lapian. The translation of a rent verse is again by Je John Mitsuko Cash, and it flows really well, capturing the character's voice. It is abated by a wonderful variety by lettering by Alexis Eckerman. There's also a single but helpful page on translation notes. Japanese honorifics are entertained and explained. As the earlier volumes, there are plenty of cute lighter moments, mostly depicted in four comma pages, one to two per page cut chapter, and more at the end. Delivering Halloween, Yamato's birthday, and a long scarf. A bonus chapter takes us back in time into the middle school ski strip in which Kakeru isn't doing well when he's snowboarding until a certain someone turns up. 
all in all, this makes for another engaging heartfelt volume in which we got to know Yamato and Kakero better, even as they got to know to each other more, as well as the people around them. What it's painted, will a little, is that we're really not very much further on at the end, that we're at the beginning. Bring on volume 5 please, Yen Press, 8 over 10.